All right, let's get started. Um, I want to show you some tricks about basing this. Um, I'm mixing a color. Um, and so sometimes you can, when you're mixing a color, you might want something to lean a little bit more towards white or a little bit more towards this cream color. So when you're putting your paint down, you just put a little bit of the color you don't want as much of and the what color you want to be dominant is the one that you'll have the most of. So we'll go here, we'll stir this up. I'm just stirring with the tip of my applicator. And in this particular case, you wanna pay attention to how your strokes are going because when you paint your cowhide print, you wanna go vertically with it. You don't want it to horizontal and cross the shape of the cowhide because then the grooves that are in your paint disrupt the cowhide print and it doesn't look as good as it could. And so when you are basing an MDF board, I don't seal because they're nice and hard and I'm dripping paint. And then we go just nice, big, long strokes and then try to keep them straight. When I'm coming off my board so I don't have to fix the edge, I go flip right off the edge and that keeps the board from glomming. If I come this direction, I'm going to scoop that paint on the edge and it's gonna drip and make a mess. So just nice, even strokes. You want thin paint so that it dries quickly. Okay, so nice, big, long strokes. You would continue this across, allow it to dry, and then repeat with your second coat. I've got a board already done. Put my brush into water. Now, we have got a nifty tool to show you. These round um, welcome signs for your front porch um, are so popular, like they're everywhere, but it's really difficult to make straight lines going across. So we have made a very cool tool that will give you the ability to make straight lines across a round surface. And what's neat is we have an A and a B version or a one and a two version. If you put them over each other sideways, you can use them to make a gingham pattern. So it's kind of a neat little extra tool that you have. So I'm gonna line this up. I've got etched lines where it's not cut. And then of course the cut lines. This is for a 15 inch round. And then I'll use my triple threat marker. And then this is where we have a decision to make. There's different size letters. I'm going to use um, these wood cut out letters. So for a 3D effect, they're really cool. But if I use like a bigger word, like this is not as, this is way chunkier than this one is, um, then I might want wider spacing. Gather looks really good on these. And you could adhere these by using command strips on the back of this and putting them on the same place or same position and change them out so that you could have your welcome change with your seasons if you want. So you want to make sure that you kind of leave the right amount of space for your um, art, for your lettering. Okay, so I'm going to go kind of in the middle here, and I'm just going to lightly mark this. And then I have two even bands. I'll test my lettering, see if that looks like it's going to go, and that works out. And if I wanted home, I could put it at an angle put it straight. I kind of like it at an angle. So I don't know which one I'm going to finish this with, but get that out of the way. And then we need some tape. My, um, my paint is fairly fresh. You want to feel your board. If your board feels cold, then your board is still wet. And then you want to hit the blow dryer and make sure it's perfectly dry. Otherwise you can run the risk of peeling paint. So we'll get two pieces of tape. We could use the multi-maskers, which is a masking tool, but that would be kind of a pain. This is a really loose technique, and it would be a pain to do it with those. This is, those are for going around little detailed areas, not for doing giant bands. Okay. You want to make sure your tape is straight to the line you drew. Tape has a tendency to bend, so you want to definitely make sure that your tape stays straight. Okay, and then we push. Did I get it on the right side of my line? I did. Yep, okay. Push on there, and I may 
just for insurance purposes. I wanna thicken that line up just a little bit because this is a little bit wild. Okay, and that's just gonna be my masking. And I'm not pushing that down heavy because I'm just keeping the paint out of that area and going there. Okay, so the very first thing we're gonna do is we're going to make some cowhide. Um, the cowhide is done in a very loose way, so there's not really a right and a wrong. And then I'm going to show you the coolest technique using um, rubbing alcohol with spattering. You're never gonna believe how cool it turns out. It's amazing. Okay, so we are going to go with a flat brush and it's just a number, I think it's a 10 flat brush and it's a little bit worn. You know, it's just, um, just a teeny bit worn. Okay, and my lines are going straight up and down. And then I need a scumbly brush. So we're gonna use these kinds of scumbly brushes. It's got really a rough texture and this is super firm. And that's how we're gonna move our paint around. We're gonna need a bottle with water in it. And that is gonna keep things wet and it keep it moving around, okay? That is the needs. Our paints that we're using are acrylic paints. This isn't like an oxblood color and then this is just a rich dark brown. So I'm gonna use just that mix of the two of them. I kind of go in later at the very end and darken with this um, deeper brown. So it's mostly this, but it is a mix. So this pattern is the longhorn pattern of fur, and it's just super buzzing right now. Everybody that sees it goes crazy and gaga over it, so we had to do this project. Okay, so we're going to mist lightly. Okay, and if you feel like you got a little overzealous, you could gently wipe it back if you wanted to. I'm gonna pick up my paints and brush mix them. And I think I want a little bit of water on my palette. I'm using a flat palette. You could do this on a paper plate, all those kinds of things. Um, if you mist in one location, it will give you water droplets. And then if you feel like your paint needs to be a little bit wetter, you can just go in and pick up a couple of drops. All right, and then we're going to randomly place. So we're just kind of kind of get in there. And we want to make organic things. I don't want a line going straight down. I need it to be more organic. I'm flipping my brush. Trying to make some things longer, some things not. We're gonna go here and just fade it down a little bit more. I don't like that ending right there. And that looks a little bit more natural. We're not gonna do just one, like one of these. We're gonna do several um, layers of things. So I'm gonna pick up a little bit of water. I've got paint still mixed. Now I'm gonna turn my brush over, my brush, my board over, and we're going to flick it this direction. Remembering that I've got some flowers that I'm gonna be putting in here, so I'm gonna want this to be a little bit bigger so it shows. If you get an ugly, okay, you get something that you don't like, you take a little bit of water and you can say, I don't want you there anymore. And it might stain your board, just keep going at it. Okay, and my, my water in my bucket has got a little bit of dirty brushes in it, so I'm using the, the squeeze bottle. There we go. So if you get something you don't like, and I didn't not like that, but if you get something like that, it's nice to know that you can take it away. Okay, so we'll go back, give it a little squirt. And that gives me just a little bit of blending time. Notice that it makes it a little bit soupier. Yeah, like that. Okay, and we're gonna go and add other, other bits. Okay, 
when you're painting something that's random like this, it can be very, very helpful to have examples to look at. But notice that as I blend, my color is fading. Um, so that's why we have to go over it with an extra layer or two. Okay, now we wanna bring some random skinnies. Oh, that's fun. Fun, fun, fun. I tend to squint at my board. Um, when you squint at something, it makes the, um, the hard lines disappear and you can kind of see form over, um, over like detail. And so that's a nice way to do that. Okay. See how the puzzle pieces fit together? So we've got a big blank spot here. How do I want to handle this? I think I'll have a freestyle, free floating. Really important to keep those lines kind of straight. And I got a little bit balanced right there, so I think what I'll do is pick up and make some sort of extra splotchy to break that. Okay, that's looking good. Now we do some little ones. These are almost like freckles. Try not to line them up like I just did. And let's make him a little bit maybe taller. Okay, I think that's busy enough. Now let's deepen it. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of water, a little bit more brown than red, paper towel. Just blot it a little bit, and now within the lines that I made, I'll do the same exact thing, but don't take them all the way to that edge. And that will deepen and add texture. And sometimes you won't even need to blend. Yeah, I'm liking that. Are we dry? Not really. If you find that you're lifting color, which some of these blends that I did, I was lifting my color, um, you might need to go ahead and hit the blow dryer. Or don't blend as hard. Stepping back also can help you. Ooh, base coating, not a good idea. Over here. So I somehow landed there with a little bunch of blobs of paint. Not intentional, but what I'll do is I'll disguise them and make them into bigger freckles. So we can have freckles within our freckles. And we don't want everybody to be the same, so we could wipe off our brush and go add some like ghosty things that we just kind of wipe out with our finger. Fingers are great paintbrushes and blenders. Okay, this is so much fun. All right, now we repeat on the other side. It's exactly the same thing. And then we're gonna add the fun spattering. Okay, I want that that way. When you're laying out your, um, your pattern for the other side. I'm going to make sure that you're straight. And then I don't want to put a mirror of what I've got going on here. I almost want it to go opposite. So if I have a big blob here, I'm going to want a big blob over there. And then if I have that big blob at that corner, I'm going to bring it up here. OK. 
Okay, pick up our paint. We're using like about a dime worth of paint and I spit out about two silver dollars. So you don't need much paint to do this technique. Okay, so we're gonna go over here. I'm noticing that my color is the darker deepening brown. So I'm gonna go blend more of the red into that so that my base is the same. And you can make your shapes be different. Like your shape don't, does not have to be the same as the one that you're doing opposite. And I don't have anything large in this middle area here, so that might be a really nice place. I find it much easier too to pull towards myself Turn him back around, do the hokey pokey. Okay, do I like that for balance? I think I want that middle one bigger. Good catch. All right, and now we'll start working on our skinnier fillers. If you get a sticky stucker, just rub them a little bit. It can be easier sometimes if I'm noticing I'm pulling into the, my side with my elbow, so that makes my straight lines um, curve a little bit at the end. So what you can do is you can arch your board slightly so that when you're moving your arm, you have a straight movement back and forth and you're not running into yourself. I'm digging it. Okay, now let's go in and start making some of the freckles. There's really not a right or a wrong with this um, because every one of these cows is just blanketed with all kinds of different patterns. It's gonna be what you, you're loving about it. Okay, now we'll deepen them. A little bit of brown. And so that just, I wanna make sure I get all the way on this tape line. So I need to blend that into that tape. And that might have to get in there and finger paint. There we go. And I'm constantly looking at the other side to see what I've done over there to see if I'm balancing. And now I don't do it everywhere. We're not gonna do the same exact thing as we did on top. I, think I need a little bit more red down here. So the streaks are almost like your foundation, and then you do the art on top. That just gives you almost the, like the layout. Well, I like it. If I didn't like something, and so I think I have more dark freckles over here than I do on the other side, and maybe they're a little bit the same, right? So what I can do, once my brush out, pinch out all the water, I can pick up a little bit of my base coat color and I can tone some things down. So just make it disappear. Just back down just a teeny bit. I think it must have been that one that was making me mad. 
If you do this when your paint, when your brown paint is dry, then you won't make pink. If you do it when either your white paint is wet or your brown and red paint is wet, then you will make pink. So make sure that your paint is dry. Okay, and these two look a little bit samey same to me. So I'm gonna back him back just a little bit. Okay, next, spatters. This is so much fun. Let me get my brushes under control here. We're gonna use a White Wonder, and this one is the three quarter. I also like the half inch as well. Um, I'm wanting to see what big spatters will do, so I'm gonna kinda do the big. So we're gonna get some water on our brush and we're going to thin our paint. We're gonna do just a little mix right here and we're gonna get it thin, thin, thin. And this is going to make spatters in the middle of my um, stuff here, so I'm gonna need to tape that. You could tape something that was a mask in place, um, like a sheet of paper or something like that. Uh, I have tape handy, so I'm just using the tape. Okay, so now we're going to test spatter with a large handled brush, okay? So I'm gonna show you down here with this paint nice and thinned. I'm gonna spatter off. Obviously that would be way too strong for our board right here, okay? So we're gonna go over here and we are going to anchor. I anchor because I want some, that's not gonna be thin enough, because I want control of the spatters. The anchor will help my spatters land exactly where I want them. Okay, so I'm going to anchor. Now watch what happens when we squirt with rubbing alcohol. So it kind of makes them dissolve and do this really crazy thing. I don't know that mine are wet enough. Let me do it a little bit wetter. Now it will also reactivate your paint and it could wipe off your paint. So you wanna make sure that you're not messing anywhere where you rub the alcohol. So I'm gonna get a little bit more water. And then we'll go over here. And then mist it. And then try to make them run. Oh yeah, these are turning out cool. So, lay my board, go on. Some runs here. There they go. Can you see that, Rusty? Kind of ran down the edge. Dried out. So this makes the spatter get bigger and it makes it run and it makes it feel way more organic like freckles. Nope. Want some great big juicy ones. Yeah. Oh, so cool. So cool. All right, I think that's enough freckles. If I didn't like some of these, I could go after they're dry, or even right now, could use a Q-tip, pick some of them up. Um, I can use that um, masking technique where I use the base color and flick over a couple of them. So you're not stuck with them if you don't like them. You can just back them down, put them forward. You just do a little dance with it. And we're still not quite done 
deepening the color here. Um, I wanted to get kind of the balance first and then we'll see what it looks like. So let's get some more spattering. Next, we're gonna let this puppy dry and I'll get back to you. All right, guys, we're all completely dry. I left for about a couple of hours and just let it organically dry. Um, and now I'm going to mist it with my water. I've got a little bit of my just the dark brown and I'm going to go in here, not lay my hand on my project, and kind of overlap some shapes I'm not looking at a picture of cowhide right now. I'm just imagining space, if that makes sense. Not like the final frontier space, but like. And then just kind of giving some dark anchors to this print. I feel like something needs to be happening in here. Maybe this needs to come out over here on this side. It's kind of a like design with me project, right? Because whatever your shape is going to be, is going to be something that you're going to need to be like, mm, what do I think? Um, so don't be afraid, putting something in there. Know that you have your water bottle, know that you have your paper towel. If you hate it, immediately go away with some water and a wipey poo, okay? So don't feel afraid of doing that. So we're going to give... And I'm trying to make things not line up. So for example, that was a edge, um, an edge bound band of red. Now I'm drawing it down with a little bit of brown. So maybe I'll make that and then feather just a little. And I don't wanna go too far. So I'm gonna go ahead, give this little edge over here something to say. Give it a feather feather and then flip it over and continue on this side. Same thing, a little bit of water. When I'm sweeping, I'm not doing a really hard, like I'm not pushing the dirt off the edge. I'm just doing a whisk, whisk, whisk with it. Tinting those. I'm going to come up here and sneak a little bit of an extra over there. Okay, I'm going to call that and now we're going to go to work doing a little bit of masking. So we know that I got a little freckle crazy. Um, I have a dog named Freckles, maybe that's why. And um, we're going to go in here and we're going to pick up some of our base color. Um, if you notice, my paint has been out on my palette for a couple of hours and it's not, it's not dead. So um, I'm going to go in and settle in some. I'm not going to make them disappear. I'm just going to settle some in. I've got some of these that I absolutely adore because they just got wild with the alcohol. And then, and I don't mean that in a weird way. Um, but we can just mask a couple. Ah, uh, some of this stuff. Oh, it's so pretty. Like I am in love with that technique. And 
And then I can go through and, ooh, hi, a little bit too much. I can change how much white space I have. Okay, I think I could probably feather that over just a little bit. When I'm looking at that, I am seeing just a little bit of a strong, that just feathers it just a little. Okay, so we've got things dry. I'm gonna peel my banding away so you can see what that contrast is gonna look like. And ta-da! I am so excited about having this blank space with this hide. It's just wonderful.